Hello, beloved angels of great light, love, joy, and presence. We are here. We are here. We are here. This is indeed a divine moment. And all divine moments will in all ways string together, one into the other, into the other, into the other. They are all one. They are not separate, which is why all divine moments will always come together. In the recognition that all divine moments will always come together, and in the understanding that this is a divine moment, then the expansion of the limited mind can relax again into the limitless experience, allowing itself to recognize that every moment is a divine moment, that a declaration of a divine moment is merely an affirmation of a known truth, not a necessary action. A known truth, a known truth is as follows. It is an irrefutable energy signature that exists within all space time and is ever present, ever aware, ever expanding, and ever acknowledged. Because in order for something to even be a truth, it means somewhere there is an acknowledgement. And yet, if we were to continue in this moment of educating a limited mind to restore its limitless wisdom, we would invite thee to recognize that acknowledgement is of density. Thereby, the perception of truth is of density as well. Take in a deep breath. You may wish to simply feel the energy of this revelation again. For what is revelation? Revelation is a divine disclosure offered to when, and yes, when, offered to when the energy of limitless wisdom is present to receive it. Without the energy of limitless wisdom ready to receive it, a revelation is a prophecy. There is a great moment at hand because these two energies that are sisters, that are brothers, yet are not the same. Revelation and prophecy. Revelation and prophecy. To recognize the path of self-ascension is to recognize the limitless wisdom of self-revelation. To recognize a world in form is to recognize a need for prophecy. Prophecy is desired. Revelation is honored. Yet in your world, these two sit as sisters. They sit as brothers. Yet they sit in a stream of energy that harnesses a linear recognition. It is time for all who are ready to simply lift through the linear and expand into the circular. You are limitless. This is a known energy. Within the world of density, it becomes an acknowledged truth among the wakened few. To know is to be. To be is to honor your limitless form. To honor your limitless form is to open up the divine portal of all revelation through the gift of self-ascended acknowledgement. Some may say, yet how do I know? Or is there an ego involved in this process? 
Ego is a necessary tool. It is a gift that is offered as one walks through navigating a world that demands to know truth through a linear form. Thereby, it is a good thing. There comes the moment when, like the clothes that you wear in form, the ego is simply discarded for the new form to continue. Ego is never without. It is, however, transformed. The clothes you wore as a child are not the clothes you wear as a teenager, are not the clothes you wear as a young adult, are not the clothes you wear as a mature adult, are not the clothes you wear as an awakened adult. Do you understand? For in our heart, as we offer this energy of heart, we understand that you understand. The ego is merely a set of clothes, and when it is time, you will discard the ones you have for the next set. It is not something that is meant to stop you. It is a gift, a tool that is meant to propel you. All of the energies of density, all of the energies of density are meant to propel you, are meant to expand you. The key, the question is, as with revelation and prophecy, all energies are sisters, all energies are brothers. They are the one and they are different. They are the same and they manifest in all form. So the key is to understand that as you are expanding and as all is serving, what is it that you are expanding? How are you expanding it? And where does it expand you to? These are important questions because to offer yourself the blessing of the inquiry to the self is to expand beyond the limitation that presents itself to you in all ways. Why do we share with you today prophecy and revelation? Because in the imminent time that exists for many now, for those that live within the linear form of what you know as time, this is the moment of great prophecy. It is also the potential moment for great revelation. Prophecy is revealed through the densified mind seeking an acknowledged truth, thereby supporting an energy or a prediction that has been placed into a timeline sequence, inviting a mass group of individuals to have a certain experience. In the moment at hand, there are many who are building great momentum around some very specific prophecy. These specific prophecies are gaining momentum simply because those who are in the energy of the density seek to acknowledge a truth that they believe is real. We smile at this with you, for all truth is real if it is not acknowledged. All truth is real when it is acknowledged. All truth is real how it is acknowledged. All truth is real where it is acknowledged because truth itself is born of density, because it is of a need. One needs truth when one denies revelation. One needs proof when one doubts self-inquiry and the wisdom within. Do you see the powerful discernments between these two? It is a shift from needing to knowing. To need is to believe in lack. To need is to honor poverty consciousness in all ways. One can be very, very, very tangibly wealthy in the financial form of your world and yet need so much that their poverty consciousness is great. 
and one can be filled with divine self-revelation, yet perceived by others to be in poverty when they carry great riches. You carry great riches. You have always carried them. You always will carry them. There is not any way they can go away from you. They can only be hidden through the need or perception of need. For through this, uh, we offer you a word we choose carefully. Let us use the word insatiable desire for curious response. Insatiable desire for curious response. This is what destroys the infinite abundance within, a need for everything to be proven. When you seek to prove, you limit the method of proof to that which is available in a world of densified realms. To free yourself from the need of proof is to free yourself to expand well beyond the density where the infinite wisdom is forever revealing, where all revelations are, let us simply say, ever present. We invite thee to relax into this recognition because the moment of great prophecy versus revelation is upon you now. You have been prepared to walk through this. There are many gifts of self-ascension that have been offered to thee to offer to thyself the quelling of the insatiable mind to offer to thyself the upliftment and joy of the self-ascended recognition. How do you wish to play in this field? There is great prophecy and there is great revelation. Where you play, how you play, what you play are your decisions. And they are important ones before you now. Seek not when you already know. Fear not when you already are. We offer to you today another revelation in the form of a response of your question, a question that comes from the divine inquiry, a question that is formulated to offer revelation, not prophecy. Sri Ramka, we invite thee to offer the question that is, in your numerical sequence, number 20. So I have here the summary of all the questions. And number 20 reads like this. As I interact with others, I always think about the messages from the Essene. I find it is easy to offer blankets to those who are asleep. I speak to those who sleep in words they understand. It is joyful to be with those who are awake. The drowsy are trickier. They talk a lot about spiritual things. I stay quiet unless asked a question, and then I answer based upon what I have learned through the discourses over the years. Many times my answers make the drowsy uncomfortable, or they act like they didn't even hear me. After I answer once, I never push the issue. I always let them question me if they choose to. In the Essene discourses, we are asked to walk out of the woods. Am I out of the woods by answering questions the way that I am and just being present? Or is there more to it? I want to be careful not to get egoic and be pushing my point of view. We invite thee all to first recognize that the Essena energy is an infinite energy of divine revelation. The Essena energy is limitless and ever present. The Essena energy sits with thee in great, great ways. The Essene energy as it shared itself in form in your world 
during many periods of embodiments is the physical form of Essina energy. Your question says Essin, and so we start with this to simply say we respond as the eternal Essina. Yes, beloved one, as an eternal being who chooses to live without the need for prophecy and in the flow of revelation, there is a great moment when we shed the clothing of our early adulthood, known as that ego, and we step into our new set of clothes in our awakened adulthood. At that moment, we once again pick up the staff of divine wisdom that has been ever present, and we recognize that all beings in form are available to experience three forms of awakeness. There are those who are very awake to their being asleep. For those who are asleep, it is a great gift, as you say, to offer them a blanket, to tuck them in, to allow them the gift of sleeping. For when one tries to awaken one who is asleep before they are ready to awake, they are indeed not very pleased with the one who has attempted to awaken them. This is demonstrated so often with small children in your world. And so this is a blessing to master this. For those who are in the awakened stage of drowsiness, this is where the inquiry begins. There is a great gift in being with the drowsy, for the drowsy will always and in all ways inspire the one who is awakened to hone their discerned awakened presence, their discerned awakened beingness. We have spent much chatting about discerned awakened beingness. When one is in the drowsy state, they are in the need of the demand versus the command. They often have needs. They are often speaking of things with great authority, yet the actions of their life do not sustain the speech. They are waking themselves through incongruence. And for the one who is awake and present with the drowsy, oftentimes one responds to the drowsy very similarly to the way they respond to the one who is asleep. Because when one is drowsy, they have not yet fully decided to awaken, nor are they fully asleep. This is why in your question you say it is tricky, and that you may respond once, but they react, so you never respond again. To be awake, to be with those who are awake, is to release all need to justify release all need to be demanded upon, release all need to even decide how to respond, for the natural response becomes your state of beingness. Oftentimes the drowsy will demand, oftentimes the drowsy will speak great words, pay attention to how they live, pay attention to the presence, this is not for judgment. This is the gift they are giving to you. For when you choose to be in the awakened state, you will be over and over and over again invited to remain awake. For is it not true that in your world, when you have been awake too long, it can become very difficult and you feel a need to sleep? and you sleep again, and you may wake up drowsy again until you find yourself awake again. Yet as you practice conscious awakeness, you discover that you are able to step into a unique role. Let us offer you a word of your vocabulary for that role. The word we offer is true leadership versus friendship. 
in the world of density, these words become confused. Friendship feels familiar, comfortable, supportive, and friendship oftentimes is found in both the sleeping and the drowsy state. When one steps fully out of the woods, one recognizes that the lion that has come forward, the enlioned being that is now fully awake, steps into an unknown yet familiar experience. It is unknown because the manipulated stream of energy, often referred to as friendship, cannot come with an awakened being. You, as an awakened choice person, cannot bring your friends with you because you want them to join you. You must be willing to leave all in the woods. This does not in any way imply that you are no longer interacting. It does, however, invite you to recognize that where you interact, how you interact, when you interact, will indeed shift. And the great gift of those who are around you is they will invite you to discern, are you awake? Are you asleep? Are you drowsy? And how do you hold these energies? There is always the gift of the prophecy or the revelation. Which is it that you choose to gaze upon, that you choose to empower within? Your world seeks great lions and your world has many woods. Many worlds have lions. Many worlds have woods. The state of your conscious expression, the state of your conscious expansion, the state of your divine recognition of the wisdom versus the need for truth will answer your question as rapidly and as powerfully as our attempt at words we pray has offered to you as well. Beloved angels of great light, there is no more linear time to simply pretend. Yet, you can pretend as your state of being. However, all states of being are now in the fully ignited state. Which way do you wish to be? How do you ignite your state of beingness? There is great revelation revealing itself now. Ancient wisdoms resurfacing within. Ancient texts coming forward from your heart and soul. Ancient language. Ancient healing. Ancient ways of being. All of this is available. As is all prophecy. It is all available and it is all yours to play with in this infinite playground. We love you. We care for you. We care with you. And we will not carry you for you do not need us to carry you. You do not need any energy to carry you when you are the infinite energy. You have always been this energy. You will always be this energy. And this is the greatest revelation of all. And so it is. And so you are.